Hey creative crowd, how are you doing? It is time for another creative chat and today I have a really interesting topic for you and I think some of the things that I will say today will blow your mind. The topic is artificial intelligence and how it changes our understanding of art, of creativity, of course also of photography and photo editing. The reason for that is, uh, first of all, I found this really nice compilation of how art uh, and AIs are working together, starting to work together. So this is on artsandculture.google.com. I will link it in the video description. But also there is more and more software out there that is AI supported to help us with photo editing, beautifying pictures, editing landscapes, applying a lot of skill that would take a lot of training and years of uh, yeah, training basically to, to get uh, that kind of skill level and AI can help you do that uh, with the snap of a finger. And this very much changes our understanding of um, what creativity is and how art works. Uh, I want to show you two examples here and mind blown by this. Uh, software that is created by NVIDIA. This is an AI software and you can see here that you can basically um, select materials. You can basically, they're not really select materials, but you give different colors for different regions and then you very roughly draw out a kind of a landscape that you want to have and Basically, in real time, the software is creating a landscape that looks like a photograph. So not only do you not anymore have to go out there to take the picture, you can create a realistic looking landscape that really to the uh, like very, very precisely represents what you actually need uh, for your artistic purposes, which of course can be very uh, useful in, in certain applications, uh, for example, for movies, for advertisement and all these kind of things where you just need a certain kind of fantasy landscape that maybe is not even out there and you can create it with this. Another application of artificial intelligence is a style transfer. Uh, so you can see here uh, we have a video of Picasso painting and then you have different art styles below and the video is rendered in the way of these art styles of the styles that these artists have created and uh, in the past it had taken a lot of computer power a lot of time you can only apply it to one picture but now we are basically in the area where we can apply it to a video or even in real time uh, to a video feed so this is really really amazing and um it can very much change the approach um, on how artists work. And of course, in the creative industries, these kind of techniques, they are very welcome because um, instead of taking weeks or months to create a certain artistic styles or creative concepts for a video game, for a movie, for an advertisement, for new design, stuff like that, you can have you can be supported by an AI to create maybe in an afternoon hundreds or thousands of different art style variations, select on them and then build on them. So this can be really useful. And of course, you have um, photo software that also helps you um, do these kind of things. Now, um, you might think, yeah, but this takes the art out of art. It takes the skill out of art. It's not kind of um, a good thing to happen. But when you think about that and you think back about a machine that can create pictures and helps you um, overcome a skill that you don't have, uh, we have had that in the past and it has changed the course of art and our standing of creativity forever uh, in, in all societies around the world. And this machine is a photo camera that you use for photographs because, and here's the mind blowing part, a photo camera is nothing else than a machine that creates a picture for you and of course you can paint the picture you can draw the picture with a pencil all this kind of stuff but you don't because now the camera can do it better than you and you have programs in the camera like the night shot and the sport shot and the portrait mode and all these kind of things that support you in a way that has built in professionalism to help you decide on different 
different kind of camera settings on how things should look how things should be uh, kind of settings you have and then you have these overlay grids for the golden ratio for the rule of thirds all these kind of things that will support you in your artistic creation so we have this not AI based but machine based so it's a different process but it's already there and now let's look at some examples how this has changed us as mankind and our approach to art so here we have a painting and now another mind-blowing thing here's a painting and look at the year when it was created this is by Rubens and this is from 1611 1611 yeah here is another painting this is by Ingres and this was created in 1811 1811 200 years difference you see when you're not an art expert you probably think that these are kind of similar there's not much difference going on it's two paintings and eh, kind of realistic all the kind of stuff now let's look at another painting and this is a hundred years later so this is from 1911 this is by Kandinsky you see the difference you see how this is completely different it's not just a little bit different like with these two yeah, where you would really know something about art to see the difference and know that this is the older picture and this is the newer picture this is mind-blowingly different and here you have a picture only four years later this is by Malevich and this is the black square historically art historically really important painting and of course I know I hear you say but this doesn't take skill this isn't art here's the important part that you need to understand when you have a camera and a camera can do this in a second why why would you spend all of your life and energy and skill on doing this and mankind has decided it's a waste of time we don't need this we don't want this if we are artists we want to express ourselves and the artistic expression cannot be to simulate something that can be done by a camera and I know of course we have things like hyper realism realistic paintings all these kind of things that are still happening and they are useful for art but they are done out of a different purpose out of a different artistic necessity and focus and um, uh, aim basically but this kind of art when you think about it you can do this with a photo camera so what can you do what is the essence of art what is the meaning of art and suddenly you say well if it's not to paint something realistically so people can see a nice picture what else could it be maybe it could be how I see the world maybe it could be how I feel inside maybe it could be that I hear music and I want to paint the music with colors so you have this and this is completely different and this is in a lot of ways maybe even more honest art because this is about what the artist feels what is happening in a real actual expression of what is going on inside you and when you think about your feelings for example it's not only hard to uh, put feelings into words it's even harder to put feelings into a picture and this is what is happening here this is trying to figure out um what is happening uh, with our artistic expression of course when you look at this down here this is maybe not so much about feeling this is very much more about oh, what is actually art what is the creative process what is the canvas what is happening in a canvas and how is the canvas interacting with the uh, surrounding with the viewer with the art history and the art discord that is going on so another very interesting conversation but the most important point here is you can see that the photo camera has really drastically changed our understanding and approach towards art and to towards the necessity for expression and creativity and now the interesting part is we have an artif uh, artificial intelligence that can simulate in a very very sufficient way human creativity and can just apply artistic styles to another picture and not only can it apply artistic styles it can make thousands and thousands of variations of designs of creations of artistic expressions from that so this calls into question 
what is actually the creative process and should we have something should we have a new approach should we have a new understanding of the creative process of authenticity and art of who we are as artists and here is another point that is really important to understand especially in the discourse in the conversation about beauty and photo editing you can use an artificial intelligence to figure out what what makes a human face beautiful uh, based on the standards that we give it of course uh, like uh, fashion magazines and all kind of other kind of beauty concepts uh, that we have out there so this is very subjective but the more important part here is that the ai can figure out very precisely what makes a beautiful face by these standards and then create not only and this this is a really important and mind-blowing part here not only create a beautiful face it can create a hyper beautiful face so a beautiful a, a face that is more beautiful than actually possible and the reason for that is if this sounds really crazy and strange is that you have to understand that um, the AI is not working in pictures, it is working in numbers and it is trying to reach so basically between zero and one where one is the perfect goal and zero is completely failing the goal. It's trying to get closer and closer to this kind of one value uh, where one is the training goal that we set for the AI. And now if you have this number, if you have the setting where I say, okay, I can say that for a male human face, this number exactly is what qualifies as the highest form of beauty uh, from all the faces that I have. And I have the number, I can push on the scale this number in both directions, going less beautiful, but only also going more beautiful and then also going hyper beautiful. And when you understand the concept behind that, if you understand what this means, basically, this means that it can also become hyper creative. It also can become hyper artistic. So because of the art that it is analyzing, the things that it's seeing and splitting up the information around it and putting it into numbers and making thousands and thousands of examples, comparing them to come closer to this set goal, this means that we can now tap into forms of creativity and into forms of art that we ourselves couldn't even imagine and this can happen in thousands of variations in just one day or just one hour so we now have basically opened the door to a form of creative creation and artistic variation that is not possible for us and you can see that by the way that we work as a society and how we invent things and how creativity happens for us and how hard it is for to for us to come up with something new that we are extremely limited by the way that our brain works and how we interact with our surroundings so um if you ever tried to come up with something completely new, you will figure out very soon that this is incredibly hard to do. Uh, an easy example for, by, uh, for example, would be, um, for example, take numbers and we have the numbers from one to 10. And now let's imagine the numbers don't go from one to 10, they go from one to 15 and then it starts again. So it's not 10, 11, it's 10 and then five more numbers and then comes 11. You understand what I mean? Try and come up with names that sound like actual numbers for these five additional numbers. Just the names, just the names. Not even understanding what it means, how these numbers would work, just the names. And you would see it's incredibly hard to even come up with that because it's invention creativity is something that is incredibly incredibly hard and this is why um, we have so few people that actually can be creative or even super creative like Picasso for example who really stand out of the creativity from the rest but now suddenly 
we have artific uh, artificial intelligence that can create thousands of variations and be hyper creative uh, just by the way that in which artificial intelligence works different from the human mind and also by the way how it is not limited by the borders that we are limited on uh, by in our creativity and our perception of the world and this is also basically a very interesting part about artificial intelligence it is actually a bonus it is actually a feature that it does not understand what it is doing because nothing comes into its way. Because for us, we have a lot of things that limit us in our understanding and our approach because we have all this kind of um, visual language and morals and history and subculture and gender and uh, region and uh, our where we come from, all these kind of things that define who we are and how we think about the world. And we are very much limited by that in the reach of how we can understand other things and how hard it is for us to understand new things. Um, even if we have an open mind, some concepts are just incredibly hard to understand. And then you have an AI that does have none of these limitations. It can just do uh, what it does, of course, limited by its features how well it is programmed as an artificial intelligence and what goals we give the artificial intelligence to work but within these limits it can create these thousands and thousands of variations and we can build on that and this calls into question so now if painting a photograph is not what art is about but also being creative is not what art is about because artificial intelligence can be creative for us it can have this basically not just the spark but the most important part of inventing new forms of expression what is left for us how does this change how we understand art and culture and basically also ourselves and who we are you know so this is a very big question and I think we will see really interesting answers to these questions coming to us in the next years and artificial intelligence is rapidly uh, evolving and rapidly giving us new results like you have seen here today with this example here but also with the software that is uh, developed by Nvidia and stuff like that. Um, so it's really crazy and it's really interesting and we are at the dawn of something that is incredibly similar to what has happened at the 19th century with the start of modern art where art changed from this to this and I think that we could see a similar jump of course not in the sense of going abstract in a different sense maybe and this is my best guess is that the new focus of art will be what is the humanity inside of us i think this will be the next big question in art and creativity is what makes us human because apparently it's not creativity and it is not skill it is something else something else makes us human something else makes us different from artificial intelligence and from these other parts and really defines who we are and what is creativity and art for us Okay, that was the creative chat for today. It was really, really intense. Um, write me in the comments what you think about that. And I'm really looking forward to the future and seeing what is going to happen um, with artificial intelligence, with art, with creativity, also with photo editing software. Um, maybe in some years my tutorials will be redundant and the computer will just edit it for you. You just talk to it and say, hey, I want to have a nice sunrise and bam, you have a nice sunrise in your picture. Have a nice day. See you in the next video and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.